Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome to the big show, playoff edition number one, with the deluge of rain approaching and already here, frankly. We are channeling Waterworld. It's a Kevin Costner classic. Dry land is a myth. You'd be a fool to believe in something you've never seen before. Regardless, our crew is taking no chances. Our own web guru, Samantha Smith, has moved her equipment to high ground so she can continue to deliver the finest first in 10 site. Yes, that right on our website, WSLS.com. Which brings us to the game of the week. As the postseason opens, a pair of 7-3 and three teams who played an overtime thrill in week seven, yes, 10 Sports' Eric Johnson was at the Floyd versus Glenver rematch. Yes, if you remember that first matchup, Abby, Glenver had a number of injuries, a lot of guys out. But, of course, you fast forward to tonight. Not only did they play Little Caesar style, hot and ready, but as Coach Clifford told me earlier in the week, hot and healthy is the name of the game. Solid crowd on the Thursday night. Here is the opening drive from Floyd County. This, this pass is tipped and picked off by Avon Knoll. Returns it to plus territory. Highlanders with cash in. Brody Doyot goes up top as he did all night long. Nick Woodson on the touchdown catch. It's a 7-0 lead. Glenver far from done as they were all over the aerial attack. Doyot, beautiful spiral to Gabe Ford. Scores the 55-yard touchdown. Glenver was like a bike coming down Mill Mountain with no brakes. Nearly flawless oh. in the first half. Oh. Next drive. Drive yet another sweet pass corner end zone. Look at Ford use his size on the catch right mm. there. Made it 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Action Jackson, Jackson Swanson joining the party. 24 yard catch right there. 35 nothing in the second quarter. But Winfred Beals Buffaloes they get a big defensive play. Glenver driving. Davis oh. Goff intercepts the pass, returned it all the way to the five yard line. Floyd County would cash it in for points. Latham Barbieri goes up the gut for the score, but Glenver played mad as if someone stole their lunch money. Doyot finished with six passing TDs, one rushing. Glenver wins it 49-14. to We have some good football players. We want to get the ball in their hands. And so, you know, we were able to do that tonight. And, um, you know, defensively, I was really proud of our defense. I thought they pushed us around uh, last time when we played them, you know, again in the second half. And I was really proud that we got a lot of stops. I mean, I have can complete faith in my – my QB, O-line, D-line, of course, um, I've been gradually getting more healthy and healthier throughout the season, so, so staying confident. Glenver is certainly battle-tested this season, and what is a tough Region 2C definitely proved their work tonight. Appy? All right, and I'm hungry now after the hot and ready. Thank you for that. Appreciate it, Eric. Glenver and Floyd, two quality programs. The three and six seeds. Martinsville is the two seed in this bracket, and they get a six and four visitor from Dan River to open the playoffs. And, folks, this was no joke. Down 21-14 at the half. Martinsville needed a spark, and they get it from their senior quarterback. Rashawn Dickerson breaking tackles, carrying defenders. 28-yard touchdown to tie the game at 21-21. Bulldogs up 28-21. Junior running back Latrell Hairston straight up the gut. No one's bringing him down. 36-yard touchdown, 35-21. to Dan River tries to rally back. Senior quarterback Shamar Ferguson rolling left. He's throwing it to the corner. Jaden Haynes making the play. 25-yard touchdown to get Dan River within a point. The second half, running back Jamal Jones right here, 38-yard touchdown. You thought they had put it away at 42-27. They would have to hold on for a 42-39 victory. Meantime, Radford, the one seed, taking care of the Hawks. They now have 10 wins on the season, does Radford. And Allegheny traveled to Appomattox. That was a 40-12 score. Apple wins their eighth game of the season. So here's the bracket, and as you can see, it will be Radford and Martinsville hosting games next week in the semifinals. Meantime, it was a roundabout way to the top 1C seed for Galax this season. Maroon Tide dropped that key Mountain Empire game to George With, but finished strong to grab home field throughout. It was raining in Galax, but that didn't stop them. Galax wouldn't disappoint. Tommy Jones giving it to Tedron 
Tucker, 24-yard touchdown, 28-0. Maroon tied scoring again. Quarterback Jones handing off to Brady Lowe right here. Nice move and groove. He's in. Three-yard touchdown, 35-0. Weather no help for the Chargers tonight. Wyatt Campbell, that ball is loose. Galax recovers on their own three. And then it's uh, Brandy Lowe again, muscling his way in, 42-0. Galax wins. 49 zip. Giles at Grayson County tonight. The Blue Devils are 8 and 2, but the four seed. Here we go. Here comes the rain. High snap over the punter's head. Blue Devils recover on their own 10. Next play. Grayson quarterback Austin Dow calling his own number. He's up the middle. 10 yard touchdown, 7 0. The Blue Devils defense would be tough all night. Giles running back Christian Ratcliffe taken down in the backfield right here. Spartans are forced to punt. Just a few ticks left. First half, Grayson quarterback Austin Dow is going to find McAllister Goad in the corner. 24-yard connection. This one goes to Grayson, 35-7. to seven. Meantime, Covington at the Narrows Green Wave. Here we go. 6 nothing Narrows. Aiden McLaughlin airing Darian Johnson the pick right here for Covington to slow down the Green Wave attack. Still 6 nothing. McLaughlin going ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Under pressure, and look what he does. Look at the moves. Look at the grooves. He is all the way down inside the 10. And then how about a quick give to Sam Albert? Sam, little dive and thrive to go uh, to get in. They would go for two, and it was 14-0. Now, about two minutes to go in the half, the Cougars get on the board. It's Desmond Jordan to Purcell Turner, who hauls it in. It was 14-6. But Narrows, 34 to 18. George Wythe is the two seed. They get the victory over Perry McClure. So to the bracket we go. It's Galax and George Wythe once again hosting semifinals. And this score from the Region 1B, Buffalo Gap 56 to 36. I haven't seen it, and I've sailed further than most men have ever dreamed. At Salem, the Spartans have, well, uh, through their history, been busy turning dreams into reality. Down in Bassett, they They've covered many miles, but find themselves back at home to open the postseason. And in Lynchburg, the Pioneers' dreams are alive and well in Region 3C. We'll check in with them later in the show, plus this. We're the Narrows cheerleaders. Stay tuned for more playoff first and ten after the break.
All right, we're back. We're going to Salem, where the Spartans were stifled by a talented Patrick Henry program a week ago to complete their regular season. I think we can safely predict a bounce back. Western Albemarle in. They're the sixth seed. Salem is the three. Hoping to ring that bell, they would do it. Deron Wilson to Josiah Moyer. He's right on the goal line. Early touchdown, and it's a Salem lead. Once again, Wilson going to look for Moyer, but that's Jaden Stapp. Right there with the forcing the fumble recovered by Freddie Von Lewinsky. But here comes Chris Cole going, anything you can do, I can do better. He gets the pick six. Salem up 14 to nothing. Yeah, and the bell would be ringing plenty tonight. The Spartans still hungry for more. Javion Jones, I think he is officially a rolling ball of butcher knives after this run. Are you kidding me? Plowing through the defense, refusing to be denied. Salem rolls 42 to nothing. Meantime, how about the big win by Amherst County? 40 to 14 on the road and Louisa is victorious. The Lions are ready 47 to 13. The 4D bracket with this reminder, the top CDC glass plays on Saturday to region 3D and on paper at least the best matchup in round one, the four Bassett hosting the five Cave Spring. Moved the games to Thursday, trying to stay away from Tropical Storm Nicole. And I tell you what, the storm was brewing here in Bassett instead. Let's pick this one up in the third quarter. Not a ton of scoring until this momentum swing. Jay Rikas Harrison on the short carry, 13-7 Bengals. Then Caleb Grider is going to turn on the Jets for Cave Spring. The Knights tie it up 13 all. This one goes into overtime, tied at 20. Bassett with the first chance to score. Harrison muscles his way to the end zone. They're going to go for two. Harrison again. He said, get out of my way. Bengals go up 28-20. Cave Springs turn fourth and goal. Carter Jeffords to Cameron Parker, who reaches across the goal line. It's a touchdown. Knights going for two. Jeffords finds Grider. Double overtime. We go. Bengals with the ball after a fumble recovery. Hairston, no problem. Bassett wins a thriller, 34-28. Guys did that tonight. They battled so much. Case, hats off to Nick Leverage and Case Spring. He's turned that thing around. And they're, they're a hard-nosed football team. We knew on film coming in, being banged up, they're banged up. It was going to be who had the ball last and who wanted the most at the end. And uh, I'm just glad my guys, you know, they, they showed their grit in, uh, in adversity. That was our theme this week, battle adversity. And we did. Survive in advance. That's the name of the game right now. Go to the drawing board, watch film, see what we can do. Our D-line, they stepped up big tonight. They always have. But they'll just step up next week, and we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, this one went into double overtime. Complete grit shown by both teams. Congratulations to Cave Spring on a great season. Bassett will face Lord Botetot next week in the second round of the playoffs. In Bassett, I'm Brooke Leonard, 10 Sports. Thank you, Brooke. And if Bassett is going to continue to advance, they'll have to do it by going through Daleville, where the Cavaliers of Lord Botetot tend to make such postseason dreams Tough sledding on opponents. Hidden Valley is in, and here we go. Uh, a dose of power running in the forecast. Jakari nicely giving it to Tristan Overbay. He has the corner. He has the first down. He has a whole lot more, and I am bailing out early on that one. It would be Overbay, the short burst right here. Cavs up 7-0, and later in the first, a uh, little diversity on offense. Watch Cade Lang come in the other direction. Well executed. He scoots on in. It's 14-0 LB. Second quarter, more Botetot, more power running, more overbay. And Coach Jamie Harless and company had him cranked up. 44-7 was your final. How about Stanton River at Magna Vista tonight? Crazy game tonight. Down 6-0 in the first. The Warriors running back Joseph Spriggs. He's got the handoff. He's got the corner. 48 yards later, it's 7-6 Magna Vista. Back come the Golden Eagles. Sophomore running back making airs, making a guy miss right there. Nice cut. Waves goodbye to the defense. 14-yard touchdown. Stanton River's going to line up for the extra point, and instead it's Montana to Clark back in the end zone. That's Nathaniel Martin to Joshua Kelly. Great catch back there. Two-point conversion. Stanton River's up 14-7. Magna Vista has an answer. Jameer Hairston taking the shovel pass, making everybody miss. He's got the need for speed. 66 yards later, we had a tie game, but Stanton River gets the victory, 35-21. to 21. As we check the 3D bracket, 
This reminder, Christian Berg plays on Saturday afternoon, but the 10-1 and Lord Botetourt Cavaliers and the Catawba Crazies with the home field throughout this bracket. Which brings us to the powers that reside in Class 6 football. Franklin County with a daunting road trip tonight to Western Branch. Western Branch gets them by two scores. 28-14 is your final. And in 5D, the Colonels in that 5D bracket still scheduled for tomorrow night, or though that could move, and PH set for Saturday in Roanoke. So those two games have yet to play, but the winners tonight were Mountain View and River Bend. Nothing's free in Waterworld and nothing's free in the postseason. We'll see if the Pioneers can handle a visitor in that 3C bracket. That and more when we come back. All right, we're back, and Eric Heritage still looks to me like a team that could win a region title. They do. They seem healthy. They and, do. And then that's really all that matters right now. Do you have the players that can get you further? Right. In, in that Seminole district, it seems like teams play teams from out of our area just to come back and play each other. Right. right? Well, we're <laughs> used to it. Right. We'll get to the highlights here. Heritage hosting Stanton, Jasir Bateman, handing this off to Rajon Booker Felder. He's doing some work tonight. Gets a touchdown for the early 7 0 lead. Just three minutes to go in the first quarter. Jasir Bateman once again, a handoff this time. Jeffrey Mosley getting through the defense to the end zone for another touchdown. The defense also held the Pioneers up tonight in a big way. 35-0 on 
over the storm of Stanton. How about Brookville? Welcoming in Wilson Memorial, 273 squads. We picked this up in the third. Aiden Podgorski handing it off to Braden Tyree for the Wilson Memorial touchdown. Just a seven-point lead for Brookville, but then they start to crank it up. Drake, Drake McDaniel, a <laughs> touchdown for the Bees to bring them up 28-14 with just minutes left in the third quarter. We're going to go SpongeBob a few minutes later. Jordan Whitelaw <laughs> rushes to the right side, taken out of bounds by Parker Balcom. Brookville goes on to the 41-21 to victory over Wilson Memorial. I'll tell you what, I really, really think that either of these two teams we just saw could come through, right? And, and I mean, like I said, the best thing is that, that good old rivalry being right there. They know each other, know what they present, so it could be good. All right, let's take a look at the bracket real quick. And we'll show you that, uh, you know, LCA, play, they play Saturday. They They're out there, but are they healthy? Are they healthy? We don't That's know. That's a big question mark. And we saw it, it kind of hurt them last week, of course, against EC Glass. Right. And Turner Ashby, well, we'll wait and see what they have for LCA. All right, guys, uh, this is what's coming Saturday. In case you weren't sure, North Cross will play. That game will happen over at Salem High School. Christiansburg plays in the afternoon, as does PH. LCA plays in the evening. And EC Glass of course, as we talked about, the one in f in Class 4D, they're going to take on Halifax. And folks, twas a fine show indeed. We are back next Friday, weather permitting, of course, for region semifinal action. We'll see you next week.